My friends, we need to talk about this stuff. There is so much debate going around about olive oil and whether you can cook with it and what you can do with it. It's driving me mad. There is so much debate, but I'm gonna put this to bed once and for all. So recently I put a post up on Instagram advising a few, like just talking about a few different tweaks that people can make to their day-to-day -day diet to actually improve things further. One of the recommendations that I made was to remove processed seed oils from the diet, so sunflower oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil, all of that kind of jazz, and instead opt for olive oil as an option to cook with. And the way people responded, you would have thought that I, would have been, that I was advising people to snort sugar. It was ridiculous. There was such a backlash and it just showed me how much of a misunderstanding and how much misinformation is out there when it comes to something as simple as olive oil. Now, let me first discuss why I made this recommendation. The reason that I made the recommendation to cut out those kinds of oils, to cut out sunflower oil, soybean oil, corn oil, vegetable oil, all of that jazz, is because they are very, very high in something called omega-6. Now, omega-3 and omega-6, these are essential fatty acids. Vitamin-like substances that are derived from fats in our diet, they're essential, so we have to take them in from our food every single day, but the amount of these that we need varies dramatically, and there's a reason for this. One of the metabolic end products of fatty acid metabolism are a group of compounds called prostaglandins. I talk about these all the time. Now prostaglandins, these, these have several roles to play in the body. One of the things they do is help to regulate pain signaling. They're also involved in regulating smooth muscle contraction. So if you think like uterine cramps, that's prostaglandins that you can thank for that. The main thing that they regulate, however, is the inflammatory response. Okay, different. there are different types of prostaglandins three types actually, series one, series two, and series three. Series one is mildly anti-inflammatory, series three is aggressively anti-inflammatory, and series two in the middle is aggressively pro-inflammatory. Different fatty acids in the diet will be, will be metabolized to form different prostaglandins. Omega-6 fatty acids, we need a tiny amount of them once we take in that amount that we need each day, any excess will be shuttled down the metabolic pathway that causes the body to produce the series two prostaglandin, that prostaglandin that switches on and exacerbates inflammation. So that's why I make the recommendation to people that they should cut out those omega-6 rich oils to prevent overloading that pro-inflammatory state, driving inflammation in the body. Are you with me so far? Right. The recommendation I'm, I make for most stovetop cooking, so your sauteing, stir frying, that kind of stuff, the general day-to-day -day cooking is extra virgin olive oil. So a lot of people said at that point, oh, you can't cook with olive oil. It's got a really low smoke point. There will be free radicals formed. It's carcinogenic, la, 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 all of that kind of stuff. I started getting it in the neck straight away as soon as this post went up. So let me explain things. Here is why it's not an issue. So firstly, yes, olive oil does have a relatively, I would say medium to high smoke point. And what that actually means is literally, as the name suggests, like the point at which it starts to smoke. Now, for most oils, especially those kind of seed oils that I spoke about, that smoke point, once it reaches that smoke point, that's when you start to get free radicals forming, these damaging molecules that can actually cause havoc in the body. Now, here is why it's not an issue with extra virgin olive oil, the one that I recommend. What do you see here? Two olive oils. Firstly, we've got good old bog standard olive oil. Then we've got extra virgin olive oil. Can you see the difference? Two completely different colors, right? So this is pale yellow. This is deep, vivid green. Why does that make any kind of difference? Well, that deep, vivid green color, that's given by a group of chemicals called polyphenols. These are found diversely within our diet, green tea, 
dark chocolate, berries, fruits, you know, fruit and veg, red wine, all of that good stuff. They have a very powerful antioxidant activity. Okay, antioxidants disarm free radicals. So what was the argument that everyone had? All oh, that smoke point, you'll get free radical formation. If you're using this one, if you're using that bog standard pale olive oil, your cheap everyday olive oil, then yeah, that's gonna happen. That's not what I recommended. If you use this on the other hand, try to get in the, the light, so there we go. Like you can, you can see how dark it is. You can see it's that dark green. That means it's packed full of polyphenols. So for everyday cooking, everyday stovetop cooking, it's not going to be a problem because that sheer abundance of polyphenols is going to buffer that free radical formation. And you're able to use an oil without over consuming omega-6 fatty acids. And for that type of cooking that you'll be doing for that sort of duration of time, there's no risk of free radical formation. Fine, if you were to like, you know, do roast potatoes for two hours in the oven with it, then yeah, you might get some degradation and it might be an issue. But for most everyday stovetop cooking that you would use one of these types of oils for, it will be absolutely fine. And that is the reason why.